Here we have a scenario, real life case study, like I said, husband and wife, 37 years old, two kids. The goal is to pay off debt. Once they have accomplished that goal, this is what they want. I said, Denzel, I want to pay off debt. I said, okay, great. So that's the first problem that they're presenting to me. And I have a tool belt, right, of solutions, different ways that we could go. But instead of me imposing my perspective or view or opinion, I'm simply going to solve the problem. First, build that trust with you guys, with my clients, verify the numbers, get results, and then slowly but surely release new data, new information to the client that I'm talking to one-to-one. -to -one. And then from there, they can decide whether or not they wanna stay on course or alter, make a few changes, make a few tweaks to evolve their goals to, to achieve them even faster, okay? So their goal, pay off debt, then build wealth, increase income in that order. So with that being said, we have to start with our four major numbers. We have to know our numbers. We have to know where we stand currently. So this couple makes $8,034.77 per month. They spend $6,150.55. Total debt, $280,380.06. That leaves us with a free cash flow, money that doesn't go anywhere just yet, of $1,884.22. In addition to their four major numbers, they have... An emergency fund they have a combined savings of thirty thousand dollars they have two whole life insurance policies roughly about twenty eight thousand in cash value built up between the two okay they've got two different retirement accounts husband has a, a retirement plan wife has a 401k at where they work okay totaling roughly thirty six thousand other than that they have no other assets no uh, uh, other um, businesses, if I'm not mistaken. I think they discussed about, oh yeah, I'm a liar. They both have two small businesses that they're building. So that's the only other asset, but I don't have a valuation for those numbers. All right. So here are all the details about the client, the numbers. All right. And here are the opportunities that we have at our disposal. And I'm also going to share some other uh, uh, opportunities that they can take right so the first thing is that we can potentially as you notice in the four major numbers what do we not have we do not have a debt tool at the moment we do have these two whole life insurance policies right but we don't have a debt tool from a banking institution p lock he lock all in one loan right second position he lock first secured p lock unsecured we don't have those so Immediately, when I was looking at their numbers and the position that they're in, the, the types of debts that they have, here are the debts on, on this side, I'll get to that in a minute. I immediately saw an opportunity to leverage savings because they already have this capital built up of 30 grand. I said, hey, um, right now you can go to the bank that you're at or maybe a different bank, credit union preferably, and go get yourself a secured personal line of credit for 30,000 anywhere between three, four percent or lower, nothing above four, because I know from previous experience working with clients, I have seen people have personal secured lines of credits under four percent. I've never seen a rate higher in this environment that we, we live in, right? Low interest rate environment. It's now 2022. So there should be no issue finding that really, really low rate, right? Even unsecured PLOCs have come down to the neighborhood of 6%, 7%. I've seen clients with like six, seven, even uh, I think like five and a half, right? So when you have a secured, there's no risk to the bank. So therefore they don't need to charge that much in interest, right? So if they were to collateralize their savings, which isn't doing them anything, it's not earning anything, we can immediately put those dollars to work to help us pay off debt that is charging us interest. Meanwhile, not losing the savings to begin with. Oftentimes, I have uh, comments on the YouTube channel publicly, uh, emails, people presenting me with a velocity banking strategy of using their savings 
to do velocity banking. The issue most of the time that they have is they're not getting a secured line of credit attached to the amount of money they have in savings. In their mind, they're like, oh, what if I just use my savings, right? Say, they get, say you got 30 grand in savings and I make a chunk of 66% of 30 grand, throw it at debt and then replenish the savings and do it again. You're not doing anything other than making an extra payment with your pre-existing cash. Let's say you did that 30 grand and you made a chunk of 20 towards your debt without something securing or collateralizing the 30K, just 30K cash on hand. All you did was make an extra payment of 20 grand towards your debt using your capital. Now you only have 10 grand in capital. Does that make sense? The 20 grand is gone, lost. You now have to take your free cash flow and take God knows how long, six months, nine months, 12 months, whatever it is, to bring that money back up to 30 or wherever it is and then do it again. That seems like velocity banking. The problem is you're not using all your income to bring the 10 back to 30. You have to wait till the end of each month after you've paid your bills and your leftover cash flow to start replenishing the cash. You've just, you, you've clipped yourself, right? You shot yourself in the foot by doing that. You're wasting time. People get confused about, well, Denzel, if I go and get the secured line of credit, I now have to pay interest on my own money. I says, yes, but you don't lose the capital. It stays there, right? That's the first thing. The second thing, I'm able to use all of my income to replenish the debt that I created on the line of credit, which also allows me to cancel the interest that you're paying on the line of credit by doing velocity banking properly. We can cancel the interest. Yes, I'm still gonna get charged the interest, but by offsetting it via paying off other debt, via attaching a credit card with cashback rewards, I cancel the interest and I'm in the green, okay? Very important that we understand, fully comprehend the benefits of securing your capital, collateralizing your capital, leveraging the capital, creating cash flow and arbitrage. Very important, just wanted to stress on that. So we have an opportunity to get a personal secure line of credit anywhere between three, 4% or lower. I know PNC Bank, I worked with a client, they had like a 2.6% interest rate, right? So I know they're, they're really, really low. In addition, they have been using a credit card to run bills, right? Roughly two, 3% cashback rewards. On the low end, $2,500 out of the expenses they can run through a credit card. And from what they told me, that number is actually higher. I think it's like 27, almost three grand. But I really, really lowballed it, just at 2,500. We also have cash value loans that we can do. Now they're in the process of obtaining the information to, to, to figure out what the loan interest rate is with these policies. I did not work with them on these policies. They already had it um, prior to becoming a client with me. So I don't know all the details yet of their policies. They're working on getting that information over to me, but it's likely that the loan interest rate is gonna be somewhere around 5%. That typically is the average loan interest rate that you will see on whole life insurance policies that are written 2021 and back. Because we're in 2022 and there have been new MEC laws, new 7702 updates with whole life insurance, the loan rates on policies have come down between three and 4%, okay? So I just wanna make that very clear, but these are policies that were written 2021 and back. I think they got it in like probably 2020 or something like that. Okay. So these are our three options, three immediate opportunities that I initially saw with their numbers. Let's go over the debts on this side, see what you're dealing with. We have credit card debt, nine grand. The monthly minimum is 170, but they're overpaying, right? So they're making extra payments. Again, prior to implementing velocity banking, I'm showing you where they stand and how we're going to make tweaks. They got two student loans, right? 29K, 58K, monthly payment, 4.69, 5%, 257, mortgage, 
primary mortgage, 138, 3.75%. Uh, Here's the monthly minimum payment, 1293.41, but they're paying an extra 80 bucks on top of that. And then they have a second lien mortgage, 38K. They're paying an extra $2.87 on top of their monthly minimum of 322, 5.99 is the interest rate. Notice how all of these rates, if I were to obtain a personal secured line of credit, this rate is lower than all of these. So immediately, if you're in a position, if you have the opportunity where you're looking at all of your debts and your interest rates, your monthly payments, to immediately verify whether Velocity Banking is going to work for you or not, is if you obtain a debt tool that's at a lower interest rate than all of your amortized interest rates, no matter what, that's, that's debt consolidation right there. You're going to be out of debt faster if all you did was debt consolidate. Just move debt from one location to another at a lower rate with no origination fees, no refinance fees, right? You're immediately going to save money. Then you attach velocity banking, credit cards, cashback rewards, cash. You're going to go faster. So that immediately verifies it. Now, when you're in a situation where you're debt tool is at a higher interest rate than your amortized rates, you're still in the green most of the time, but only for a period of time, right? So if I have a 5% HELOC and a 3.5% mortgage, depending on what my timeline is on the more, if I'm in my last five years of the mortgage, my last 10 years of the mortgage, there's barely any interest left to save. So therefore moving 3.5 to five would probably not make sense unless you were obtaining the HELOC to acquire another property, right? And to create arbitrage, create cash flow, different story. But if we're just talking about paying off debt, not the case. So whenever you're approaching the end of your amortized loan, you're in the last year, last five years of the mortgage, it's likely or no, not likely, it is factual that you've paid damn near all the interest to the bank already. So there's nothing left to save. Therefore, it may not even make sense trying to pay it off early because you've already been wiped clean, right? They've already got their profit. You've already paid them tons and tons of money. You might as well leave that debt alone and probably focus on increasing your income and then writing a check one day within the same period of time that it would take you to pay off all the debt right? You can evaluate it that way. So I just want to be very, very clear on and, and showing you that. So now let's take a look at the other opportunities that are on the table. They've got the mortgage and they owe 138. They recently refinanced over a year ago. So they're at 29, 28 years left. They're at the top of the mortgage, right? They're at the top of it. They have quite a bit of equity in there. So they could obtain a HELOC either in the first or second position. They could also look at the all in one loan. It's an option. All right. And they're both pretty much the same thing. There's a difference in costs between the two. That's the primary difference between a first lien HELOC, second lien HELOC, and an all in one loan cost. So when you're sitting with the banks, it's important to evaluate what that cost is. What are these requirements? All in one loan is a little more, a little more difficult, harder to obtain more loopholes, more requirements, more paperwork you have to do versus a second lien HELOC, maybe a first lien HELOC. It may be a little cheaper. Um, and maybe you might have less uh, flexibility if you're in the state of Texas, right? You might have uh, more regulations on your HELOC. It's important to know that. So then when you look at an all-in-one loan, right, or product outside of your state, that can sometimes be worth paying a little extra for a better tool, right? Even though you pay a little extra, we can still do equal or better damage. Okay. So I just want to lay that out. Now, in terms of speed and efficiency, if they want to get this going within the next week or two, the fastest debt tool to obtain in regards to credit cards, P locks, he locks all in one loan, the fastest tools to obtain are credit cards and personal line of credit. Usually a credit card you get approved like within 48 hours, personal line of credit can get approved within a week, two weeks. He locks typically month, all in one loan, month, two months, 
so it might take longer. So it doesn't hurt. I was telling them, I say, hey, whichever route you go, it doesn't hurt to just get that, the secure P-Lock. Nothing happens to your cash. Your money is secured. If you use it, you leverage it. And then you pay nothing in interest because we're going to offset it. If we're not using it, we're not paying any interest, right? Now, if I'm not mistaken, I do believe there's opportunities with certain uh, banking institutions, probably credit unions, where you can actually earn maybe like a half a percent, one percent in a like CD of some sort and have a line of credit attached to it to help offset whatever the bank is charging you. I do believe that exists. I've never owned something like that before, but I do believe it exists and it could work very well. All right. So now what I'm going to do now is illustrate what it would look like starting off with a $30,000 secured line of credit for about call it 3%. I'm very confident we can get 3%, right? Now, you know what? Let me just do four, max 4%. And you can see how the rates here, every rate is higher than four, except but this number right here. But we're not even going to approach this number at the moment, right? Why is that? Well, in the debt snowball world, you start with smallest to highest debt, regardless of interest rate, regardless of monthly payment. In the debt avalanche world, you start with highest interest rate, right? And it's all about interest savings. In the velocity banking world, it's all about cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. In the velocity banking world, we're determining how quickly can I get to the cash flow, right? So it's cash flow first, interest savings second, balance third. But we're looking at it, you know, as one. Those are the three numbers as one. But our focus is cash flow. The, the more cash flow I have, the faster I will go with anything, whether it's investing in a business, investing in opportunity stocks, the more free cash flow you have, the more damage, the more authority, the more power you're going to have in the marketplace, period, right? So that's how we're going to determine which debts we're going to go after, right? So let's say we got 30K capital. Our typical rule is chunking two thirds of what you have in credit limit, right? So let's work the number together. Let's say uh, got 30 grand times 66%. Our chunk amount should be around $19,800 to start off. I then look at the person's cash flow, 1884.22 times it by 12 is $22,610.64. We just figured out our chunk range, anywhere from 198 to 22610.64 is our chunk range. When you make a chunk, ideally, we want a cash flow gain from that. So if I were to chunk 22,000, just by looking at cash flow alone, it would take me 12 months to restore the line of credit back to zero. But with an increased cash flow from making the chunk, you go from 12 months, anywhere from six to nine months because the cash flow went up and then you also canceled the interest via cashback rewards and whatever debt you paid off that you're no longer allocating. And now all the income is helping you offset the money even faster. All right. So looking at the debts, which ones would you go after? Comment. Let me know. What would be the debts that you would go after, right? Knowing your credit limit and knowing your chunk range. I want to hear some comments. I want to hear some thoughts. What's going through your mind? What do you see on the table? We have 39 people in the house. So I'll wait for a few comments to come in. Once I see that, we'll continue. So I'm going to keep it on the board. What are your thoughts? What debt would you go after? Okay, Christian, awesome. Credit card, 417 cash flow. Yeah, 504 credit card. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Makes sense. That's obvious, right? No question there. In the debt snowball world, no question. Debt avalanche, no question. Velocity banking, no question. So that means all three concepts are in alignment. We're taking the best of all strategies, putting it together and say, yep, should go after that. Perfect. Now, <clears throat> before we do anything, here's what's important to know. Earlier, I mentioned how they're making these extra payments. So I told them, I said, listen, by you separating your cash flow in different directions, you actually end up doing less damage. Even Dave Ramsey would agree with that, which is why he says focus on one and create a snowball effect. So 
by you making these extra payments in all these different directions, you are throwing your cash flow in the garbage. So let's recover the cash flow. And then we're going to redirect it to our line of credit after we've made a chunk. So we've got $2.87 and $80.19, right? That we want to redirect. So we're just going to put that here. 8306 redirect. Doesn't sound like a lot of money, guys. But 83 times 12 is a thousand bucks. A thousand dollars of cash flow sitting in your line of credit. What does that do? Cancels interest, makes you move faster. So I wanted to highlight that before you make any moves. If you're in this situation where you're making extra payments to here and there and here and there and here and there, understand you're sending your cash flow to die slowly. You think you're doing good because you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna attack all this at once. No, I can go faster by going bomb, 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 bomb in order, in mathematical order. Very, very important. All right. So usually when I'm figuring out my chunk, I'll just start with the lower number, the 19,800 and minus it from the debt that I know we're going to hit 9,128.18 leaves me with 10 grand, 10,671.82. Uh, so I still have more dollars to, to allocate towards a debt. Now let's just, you know, state the obvious. We don't want to go after the mortgage. Why? Too big of a balance, right? It's too big of a monster to hit just yet when you've got these little monsters that you want to tackle. This student loan, also big monster, not necessary. So in my opinion, I cross out those two, not ideal. You're left with student loan, 29K, second lien mortgage, 38K, 4.69, 5.99. That snowball world would say go after this. That avalanche would say go after this because it's a higher rate. Velocity banking, cash flow. Notice how this is a lower cash flow, higher balance. Why would you spend your time going after a higher balance, lower cash flow gain when you can do lower balance, higher cash flow, right? So 10,671.82 minus from the 29, you are eliminating a big portion of that debt, right? Roughly 33%, roughly 30K and 10. So a third of the debt, a little more than a third. So 10,671, write that out here. Six, seven, one, eight, two. We already had the nine. We got 417 in our pocket. Cash flow goes up, right? So let's let's look at that. 417 plus 1884, 22. 2301 times 12, you're at 27. You're near your credit limit already. You have now justified going above 66% to make your chunk. You've got 4.69 that you're moving to four and the 4% is not really 4% is going to end up looking like zero or maybe 1%, 2% cost of borrowing. But we're going to, we're going to manipulate that. Okay. So 29,730.56 minus 10,067.182. Balance goes down to 1958.74. 1958.74. And that was just on the 19,000 800. Okay. Did we justify that we can go a little bit more than 66% just from this debt shift alone? Yes. So therefore, maybe if they feel comfortable, depending on the client, obviously, if they feel comfortable, we can go a little bit higher to the 22.6. So let's see what is the difference between 22 and 19.8. 22,610, 64 minus 19.8. So I have a extra 2,000 Eight ten, sixty four that I can throw on the student loan. Nineteen fifty eight seventy four minus twenty eight ten six four. Boom. Balance is at sixteen thousand two forty eight ten cents. No cash flow gain, right? But a huge interest savings, without a doubt. Okay. What else do we have at our disposal? We have the two whole life insurance policies, right? And interest is also calculated simple on. The whole life policies. So if they want, they can do velocity banking, infinite banking with their cash value life insurance policies and create a double chunk effect. 
nice opportunity. They can move debt over here out of their credit report, put it into a location that they're under control and offset the interest even further. So let's look at it. If I got roughly 28,000 in cash value, same thing, 66%. That's usually how I function. Look at that, 18,480. What's our balance? Only 16. So I don't even need to go the full 66% length. And we also don't want to over leverage ourselves. So maybe we just kill the two debts for right now, move the remaining balance of 16, 2, 4, 8, 10 into the whole life policies. Like I said, that rate is going to be somewhere around 5%, might be lower. The company is Ohio National which recently just got acquired by a publicly traded company. So they're no longer going to be a mutual dividend paying life insurance company. They're going to be a stock company. So that does have an effect on their cash value performance, but I don't think it'll have effect on what they pay in cash value loans. So in addition to this strategy, they're also going to want to consider either converting the policies into a mutual dividend paying insurance company back to a mutual company, ideal at some point in time, but it's not necessarily a move that they have to make right away because acquisition takes time. So they may not have to do that right away. So if they use it now, they can leverage that six, that 28K, only use 16, and now the debt is gone. So now we gain, what, 417 and 372, 70. And we removed 10.24, 4.69 completely. And we pushed it into, in our scenario, we're going to use 4%. We moved 10.24 to 4, 4.69 to 4. Now our move is to make the 4, right? We need to make the 4 zero. We need to offset our borrowing costs. So with our line of credit, we ended up coming to a conclusion together that it would make sense to do the 22610, 64. So we're gonna say that's our balance. This is our cash flow gain, CFG, it's cash flow gain, 417,372. Here is our balance on the line of credit, 226064 at 4%. Let's do the math. Formula for calculating simple interest. Here it is. Take the balance, times it by 4%. You get 904.42 on a 12 month stretch. If all you did was make the monthly minimum payment required on 22,000 owed on your secure line of credit, you'll pay about $904.42 in interest. Divide that by 365 days. Your daily cost of borrowing is $2.47 for however long we owe 22,610.64. <clears throat> So you and I know that what we just did was debt consolidate. Step number one, consolidated higher interest debt to lower interest debt. Great. No matter what, if all you did was snowball this debt, you're going to go faster than not using any other debt and just paying the debt. So we already know that. Now we're going to add velocity. Our income is going to now dump into the line of credit over a 30 day window. Right, these people get paid, I think, bi-weekly. So $8,034.77 minus from the balance, 22,610.64. What do you get? And I hope you're doing this with me. 14,575.87, right? Let's look at that. 14,575. Do the same thing, times 4%, boom. Divide by 365, boom, $1.59 a day. Now, after income goes into the line of credit, what happens next? Expenses go out, right? So we know this is the lowest, the, the balance will be in the first month on the line of credit. This is the highest. Now we need the midpoint number once expenses go out, right? So let's look at 6,150.55 minus what? Cash flow gain, money that's, that's not going out anymore. It's gonna sit in the line of credit. So that's less expenses going out. So minus 417 minus 372, 70. So 5,360 
is our expenses per month moving forward after we make our first chunk. Not bad. What does that result in? Take the 14, 575, 87 plus 5,360, 85. Balance results, 19,936, 72. Same thing, times 4%, divide by 365, $2.18 per day. What we're doing is determining our cost of borrowing. We borrowed from Peter to pay the Pauls, right? Paul is done, now we just got Peter to worry about. We wanna make sure Peter doesn't get a fast one on us, right? So 218 plus 159 plus 247. Divide by three, the median number is $2.08 per day times 30 days. Your cost of borrowing is $62.44. Now look at credit card to help offset your borrowing costs, right? So let's say they have 2% in cashback rewards, 2,500 bucks times 2%, that's $50. In reality, they're probably running about 3K of bills times 2%, 60 bucks. Anywhere between 50 and $60 per month, they're gonna be getting a cashback rewards for simply running bills that they're already paying regardless of what debts they pay off. That's their cost of living, right? So if my cost of borrowing is 62.44, in the same month, I earn 50 to 60 bucks in cashback rewards, What's my borrowing cost? Anywhere from $2.44 to $12.44. Is that a win? Do you like that? Comment below. Do you like that? Is that attractive? I don't know about you, that seems very attractive. I, I didn't get it to zero, but dang, we got it close to zero. Mind you, this is just the first month. Your first month of doing Velocity Banking is the most expensive month, right? Every month proceeding after that, the cost of borrowing goes down. So 62 in the first month, you're probably gonna pay 50, 45 in the second. So after this, excuse me, after the second month, you're already in the green. Therefore, you've canceled interest. You thought you were paying interest on your own capital. No, you are not. No, you are not. You just canceled it. We just mathematically proved it step by step. Plus, you consolidated 10.24 and 4.69. So you're not even accounting for the amount of interest you just saved here. All we accounted for was the cash flow gain because in velocity banking, that's what we're focusing on. Cash flow. We know the more cash flow we have, the faster we go. Period. Pretty good stuff. All right. So I'm going to erase this. So hopefully you took really good notes because what I want to do is kind of uh, illustrate at least from one chunk to the next. I need a little space to do that. All right. So we know our borrowing costs in the first month was around 50 to 60 bucks. We got it down to about 12 to two the first month and we know the preceding month is going to be um, in the green, positive, zero cost of barn. We're actually recapturing cash now. So 50, 60 bucks the first month and same thing. Now we just go down the line, 19,936, 72. Now we're in February of 2020, roughly, all right? Or in this case, what I usually do when I work with clients is I go a month forward. So I'll say, okay, even though we're in January of 2022, I'm gonna illustrate it as if I was in February, starting in February, not accounting for January's cash flow. Just by doing that, I create a little room for error and you can now beat my numbers. And it's gonna make you even more happy when you beat my numbers, right? It's gonna give you more confidence, it's gonna create momentum. That's what we want. So this was end of February, looking at March, Balance is at 19,936.72. Uh, let me just say add the, the $50 in interest, okay? So minus income, 8,034.77 plus expenses going out, 17,000. As you can see, the balance is dropping by the amount of money in cash flow. And we're not paying any interest, guys. After the second month, I don't pay interest. I'm paying it, but I'm not paying it because I'm offsetting it. And I'm offsetting it here, the interest savings. We've got two debts that are gone, done, all right? Meanwhile, they're gonna continue making their monthly minimum payments on all these other debts. The next most attractive debt to go after is this one, the 38, 5.99, cash flow, 322. Again, when you look at the remaining debts, 58, too big of a monster. 138, too big of a monster. 
the cash flow is not even worth it. 257, this is more worth it. 322, right? The 5.99. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I don't even think I accounted uh, for this number right here. The 8306, I think I totally left that out. So even with that right there, is gonna make this uh, uh, go even faster. That two to twelve dollars in the in the first month, I might have dropped it by another three if I would have added this eighty three bucks, another maybe two three bucks, right? So we're not even gonna add that. I'm gonna leave that room for error, all right? So same thing, keep it going. How long does it take me to bring this line of credit back down to zero? Ideally, six to nine months for every chunk we make, and if you're doing really well, four to six months is like really good. That means you made the right amount of chunk, you didn't over leverage yourself, and you're just going, you know, the cash flow gain that you got just really expedited things, right? So 1732, 80 again, minus income plus expenses, not even factoring this little guy right here, $83. The other thing we're not factoring is, what if this person gets a promotion? What if this person gets a bonus? I factor none of that. I let that, again, build the momentum when they come to me and they say, hey, what do I do with my bonus money? Or I got a promotion, I got a raise, I got a, a, an extra commission check. I said, dump it in the line of all income, goes to the debt tool, sit in the line of credit, pull expenses out, that's your free cash flow. It's gonna help you be even more disciplined. It's oftentimes, people don't know where their free cash flow goes, especially when it comes in the form of bonus money, a promotion, extra commission check, a lot of a windfall of cash. A lot of people don't know where that money goes. They just, it, all of a sudden it just gets spent, it's gone. It's like, oh shoot, right? So we don't want that. We wanna cal calculate for it. Best way to do that, hold yourself accountable, dump all your income into the line of credit, pull it back out, pay your bills, cash flow stays. Your cash flow is 100% principal on the debt. That is what makes a huge difference than just making extra payments towards the debt directly. When you make an extra payment towards your debt directly, not all of that goes to principal sometimes. Also, by the time you make the extra payment, the interest already got accrued throughout the 30 days versus in the line of credit, you're canceling the interest on a daily basis by having your money just sit in the line of credit and it pushes that interest down, 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 right? So we're in, this was February, March, April. Let's look at it. Minus income, 834.77 plus expenses, 11,964.96. We're in May. So we got February, March, April, May, four months. Already at 11. Minus income. This is good stuff. 9,000. June. 9,291 for June, July, 6,000. Okay, here's where things get a little funky sometimes for people. When your balance on your line of credit is lower than your income per month, you're likely going to hit zero, but you still have to pull money from the line of credit to pay your bills. Now, this is the first indication when you're doing velocity banking, this is your first indication, your first warning sign, your first, you know, flag, or I should say green flag, not a red flag, your first green flag that, hey, Denzel, you need to start calculating what your next chunk and where it's going to go. So that's your first sign that you have a chunk payment coming up, that your second chunk is coming up. That's your first indication, right? Usually it's not much longer after that. It's usually like a month later, two months later that you'll be making the next chunk. The other indication is we don't necessarily have to wait to get to zero to make the next chunk because of whatever we're going after. 5.99%, 38 grand, four or five months later, maybe the balance is at like 37,000 and some change. Got a $30,000 line of credit. We can say, all right, uh, when the balance hits, either zero or a thousand, two thousand, I'll go ahead and make my next chunk. So just looking at the, the current number, 38, 442, 72, usually what I, I play around with, I say, okay, what if I, you know, just cut 50% of it, divide by two, what's that number? Oh, 19,221.08. So if I wipe out 50% of the debt now and not wait for the line of credit to go to zero, 
that helps me go faster. And to prove it, 5.99 to four, that's a savings. And because this is a, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think this was a home equity loan. And typically, this is not with all amortized debt, but like you'll see this with car loans, sometimes home equity loans. When you make a big lump sum payment towards a debt, usually the payment drops. So if I wipe out 50% of the debt, then maybe 50% of the payment also goes with it. That happens with credit cards as well. When you make a, you know, if you had nine grand in debt and you pay four, the 417 might go to like half that, or I'm sorry, 170 might go to half 170. So it happens with credit cards, happens with loans, car loans, and I think with second lien mortgages or home equity loans on a, on a primary residence. I think so. Don't know for sure. But let's say it did. That's very advantageous because I'm actually getting cash flow and moving it to the line of credit to then redeploy it right back here once it's time to, you know, fully get rid of it. So we can make a healthy assumption that by September, right? That's August, July, August, September, two months after you initially bring the line of credit to zero, it's not really at zero because you have to pay bills, right? We get that part. But we can assume right around September, maybe October, if they really just want to get it to zero, that's that's them. Again, you got to customize Velocity Banking to what you are comfortable with, what's your capacity, what the leverage you want to be doing, all that good stuff. But we can safely say around September, October, how many months was that? You got month of February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, eight months. October nine months, six to nine months, right? They could have done it in September. They could do it in August. They could even do it in July if they wanted to, right? If they do it in July, the way I calculate that chunk is by going back to whatever 66% of line of credit is, right? And I, and the new cash flow. what's the new cash flow? Let's, let's actually get the true number, 1884, 22, plus that 8306, plus the 417, plus the 372, 2756 times 12. Uh-oh, now I'm above my credit limit. So the question then becomes, Intel, can I chunk the whole thing? Yes, you can. Ideally, no, I would not personally. So you can either stick with the original number you had from chunk number one, which is healthy. So you could say, okay, 22,000, 61064 was my first chunk and then you can either minus it from what you owe on your line of credit minus 6617 17 and you can say okay um my next chunk is going to be 16000 bucks right you can say that or you can do what i did earlier and just take whatever the balance is on the debt that you want to tackle divide it by 2 and see where it falls in your chunk range and we saw earlier so let me write that you can either do a 15 47 that chunk would occur in july if you consider that number if you wait the number increases by the amount of cash flow right from the preceding month we're from six to nine so in uh, august it'll be like around three right and then you're back at 18 almost 19k so Anywhere between July, September, October, that's, we already locked that in. 38,442, we already know that number is going to be lower, right? You're paying 322 each month, right? Dun, dun, dun. So it'll be around 37 and some change, but I'm using the higher number just on purpose. Create that buffer. Here's your next chunk amount. This is safe, effective, again, not over leveraging. Anywhere between roughly 16 to 19K wipes out roughly 50% of the debt possibly the payment drops you reroute 5.99 to four four becomes nothing zero right we cancel the interest to win-win you get a little extra cash flow probably 120 or so 150 comes back to you and then we can say that if we chunked in say august that leaves us September, the month of august september october november december five months i can bet you that by December of 2022, we could pay the remaining balance off because that chunk is going to be less 
than the first chunk. Because if I wipe out 50, now I got 50% of the debt left over here. I have more cash flow now. So I'm going to go faster and I can make a, I have plenty of space in my line of credit to fully get rid of that and push it into 0%. It's you know going off four, but it's actually going to be zero in terms of what we end up actually paying because we're manipulating the rate. So I can make a healthy assumption. This couple can eliminate three debts, 38,000, 44, 217 plus 29,000, 730, 56 plus 912, 8.18, $77,300. And we're not including the monthly minimum payments that they're making on the remaining debts. So that number is also going to be a little higher. So roughly, they would have dedicated almost a hundred grand towards debt in a 12 month time frame. They're now positioned once they've gotten rid of those three debts. Only thing they have left is a student loan, very low payment, low interest mortgage, very low payment, very low interest. From there, I would now have a discussion with the client and I would say, hey, um, is it wise for us to continue to pay off debt or should we look at allocating cash flow to each of your businesses, husband business, wife business, increase income. What we can do to help us come to a conclusion is we can run a velocity banking scenario and see how long it would take me to get out of debt doing velocity banking, not just debt snowball, velocity banking, 138 and the 58K. Let's say it takes you um, two years to do that and you would have a cash flow gain of the 257 and the 1293 and you would have saved the 5% and the 3.75. Okay, that's that's nice. That's cute. Now, what if we took 100% of your cash flow, divided it by two and allocate it towards both of the businesses that you guys are working on? And what if you doubled your income in those same two years? Couldn't you just write a check at year two, same timeline, pay off all the debt, but then now you're debt free plus you have double the income versus just being debt free and the same amount of income. So here's where I start having the conversation with the client. I start talking to them about opportunity costs, cost of money, inflation. So here's where I go from just running numbers to now thinking expansion, right? So I say, hey, um, you've been doing great with Velocity Banking. You're knocking it out the park. That's awesome. You guys are 37 and by the end of 2022, you'll be 38 or 39. I think they turn 37 this year uh, or they're 37 turning 38, I forget, but they're gonna be around 38, 39 after making two to three chunks in one year doing velocity banking plus infinite banking with the, with the two policies that they have. Wiped out a ton of debt. Now I start exposing them to the geopolitics of the world, the macro economies of the world, the general economy that we live in. When I'm working with you guys, I'm working with a micro economy, just your household and your economy and how your money works. As you get closer and closer to being debt free, you have to educate yourself about macro economies, how global economy works and geopolitics and how politics have an effect on how your money is being operated. So I say, look, here's the first thing we need to know. Once they are, you know, so we're going to assume that we've paid off three debts and we're at the end of 2022 December. As of right now, January 2022, they say inflation is at 6.8%. It's much higher. It's more like 10, right? So what we've been doing is awesome. Pays off a lot of debt, a lot of cash flow gain. But if we continue down this path of just paying off debt and not exercising our kingdom gifts, our time, our talent, our treasures to increase this number, you may fall behind over time and not realize it because you're going to get eaten up by a silent inflation number, silent inflation. So here's what that looks like. And we'll use the 10% number because that's the actual number, more accurate number, I should say. If you gained a thousand bucks in cash flow by paying off debt in 2022, but inflation was at 10 minus a hundred dollars, 
you, your actual net cash flow is $900. That's in just one year. If you do it again, right, the following year, 2023, inflation is at 10%, $900, you lose another 90. You're at 810. Can you see how within just a few years, your purchasing power, even though you have a thousand bucks in free cash flow, the purchasing power of that cash flow is even less powerful. So when you go to invest money, that investment now cost 5% more, 10% more. So now you're falling behind. That is a very dangerous position to be in. You don't want that. So this is why I meet you where you're at. I say, what is your goal, ma'am, sir, mom, dad? What is your goal? I present a solution. I solve for it. I get you going. I get you educated. Wonderful. Now let me expose you to a few things that you've been hidden from, that have been hidden from you, right? Inflation, number one. Second number, ma'am, sir, taxes. In addition to you gaining that cash flow, you still have to pay taxes on the money that you make. And guess what? Taxes in 2021, let's just say you were in the 35% tax bracket. Now in 2022, you're at 39. In 2023, now you're at 45. Uh-oh. So, oh man. So in addition to my money losing its purchasing power through inflation, now I'm getting double smacked with a higher tax rate. If I continue to earn money the same way I'm earning it, ordinary income tax, employee tax, they're going to keep raising the taxes on you whether it's a Democratic administration or a Republican administration. Doesn't matter. Tax is going to keep going up. So what do you do? Solution for this problem, not debt. Debt is no longer your issue because now you understand, you comprehend the debt. You, you now control debt. You know how to be the lender. You know how to be the borrower. You know how to borrow effectively at 0%. You know how to cancel interest. You know how to leverage, create arbitrage. You get that. So now the remaining debt is no longer a burden on you. This is the burden. By the way, it's hitting you right now. By the way, whether you do velocity banking, debt, snowball, debt, avalanche, whatever it is, it's still hitting you regardless. So the solution is increase income. How do I increase income? We all know this quadrant here. You can make money in four different ways. As an employee, where you get a job as a self-employee where you own a job or as a big business owner where you create a job and as a investor where you leverage jobs. Your goal is to get on this side of the equation as fast as humanly possible. The B in the I. <clears throat> as fast as humanly possible. We increase income by discovering what our gifts are in this world. This couple has gifts. They have skills, things that they are good at. So when I'm working with you, I'm gonna say, okay, well, I find out where you've been working, what job you've had, what do you do? What are you good at? Okay, can we get a promotion? Is there any opportunities to go to executive, C-suite executive, CFO, CMO, COO? Like, how do I get to the top of that company? Why would I ever want to stay at the bottom of a company? Because of fear of responsibility, fear of accountability, fear of success? No, that's a poor excuse poor excuse. So that's the first avenue. I said, we got to increase income by doubling down your skills and talents. Okay. As you're building your income at your job, your career, I'm not saying quit it and become a YouTuber. No, that's not always the best strategy. I'm saying let's double down your skills and talents. Let's get raises and promotions. Let's get in rooms that we're not qualified to be in. But because we have the ambition, they invite us to the rooms that we are not qualified to be in. They invite us, even though we're not qualified. They see our ambition, they see your, your thrive, they see your um, tenacity, they see it. Other leaders see leaders before they become a leader. They'll pull it out of you, right? As you increase that income, now we develop strategies to reduce taxes. How do you reduce taxes? By becoming a business owner or self-employed right? An employee pays the highest, self-employed pays the second highest, 
business owner and investor pay nothing. In terms of percentage, nothing compared to these guys, the employees of the world, the working class of the world, right? In terms of percentage wise, it's like nothing. So if I make $10 million and my tax rate is 4%, that's nothing. 10, 4% of 10 million is nothing to them. They'll happily pay that all day all along. But if they were getting charged 45% of 10 mil, oh my God, that is not pretty. And this is why the employees of the world, the self-employees of the world, the working class of the world get pissed off because they're like, how on earth am I paying 45% on my 50K, on my 80K, but this dude making 10 million, 100 million only pays 4%. And I'm like, why are you mad at this guy? You need to go to your congressman. You need to become a political citizen and gain influence and talk. You need to gain influence and power and authority. How do you do that? You got to increase your income in the world, not of it. Increase your income, become a business owner, reduce your tax liability. That's how you stay ahead of inflation. Develop partnerships, network connections, reduce your costs, right? Get into opportunities that generate residual passive income in different forms of income. So instead of earning income, now it's royalty income, capital gains income. Those get taxed differently. Once you have acquired assets that reduce your tax liability and stays ahead of inflation, last thing is to wrap the asset. How do you wrap the asset? Insurance, all different types of insurance. Then it's trust, will, state planning, doctors, lawyers, CPAs, family office. This is where it gets into the big boy stuff. Big boy, big girl stuff, right? And it doesn't hurt to learn it while you're paying off the debt. Doesn't hurt to learn it So while you're paying off debt. So while you're paying off debt, you're creating action right here. Momentum, wonderful. In the meantime, on your downtime, you're reading books about the economy, macroeconomy, microeconomy, inflation, taxes. You're learning about the kingdom more. You're just getting educated. You're not making any moves just yet in this realm. You're just getting educated on how it works because you're focusing on getting positioned. Now that you're positioned, position to me feels like once I have a grip on my dollars coming in, going out, I have a system. I know where every dollar goes. I don't play around. Once I have cash flow over $2,500, three grand, four grand a month, I have an emergency fund. I've got, you know, maybe different retirement accounts. I've got my cash value life insurance. I've got these different little assets going on. They're growing, they're compounding, wonderful. Once I know what my purpose is in life and I have capital resources to back it up, I, I personally feel positioned. Then I can say, all right, if I'm still in debt, even though I'm positioned, I'm going to put paying off debt on the back burner and now I'm gonna focus on how do I go from 8,000 a month to 80,000 a month? Even if I fail miserably and get halfway there, that's 40,000 a month in income. That's $480,000 a year in income. I just solve 90% of your financial problems by focusing on increasing the income rather than paying off the debt. And again, at any point in time, we just write a check, pay off all the debt. You have the money to do it, why not? Be done with it. Now you're completely debt-free, owe no man nothing. And now you're figuring out strategies, partnering with people that understand how to eliminate inflation so it's not a, a a burden to them, eliminate taxes, and wrap their assets so it doesn't get taxed from generation to generation, okay? So that is what I wanted to touch on in terms of what comes after we pay off debt or pay down debt or get our sales positioned to do bigger things, right?